All right, hey guys. So today I'm gonna be releasing Flex 2.0. So if you haven't already heard of the Flex rig, it's a free rig for Maya that I made entirely myself. And uh, it's available on Creative Crash. So you just need to he head over to creativecrash.com and um, you know, I'll, I'll put in the link in the description, but um, if, if you still don't know your way around, just go to creativecrash.com and in the search bar, just type in flex rig. Uh, and you're good to go, it should come up. And again, it's available for free uh, for Maya 2014 and up. Again, if you haven't already heard of it, please, please check it out. It's really good and I spent uh, almost five months making that. Again, I wasn't working on it every day, but yeah. So without further ado, I'd like to present Flex version 2.0. And um, I'm really, really excited about this. It has tons of features, new features, and uh, you're going to really, really love it. And um, one thing, unfortunately, about the Flex Rig uh, 2.0 is that um, the, the scene is, is a bit heavy. So at least when I open it, it takes me about a minute just, just to open up the Maya file. Uh, it might say, you know, down down here in the um, script uh, window, it might say like um, file read in 10 seconds or whatever, but really it takes about a minute or two, depending on your computer and uh, your specs and whatnot. And the reason for that is because um, he has a whole bunch of wrap nodes and wrap deformers connected, connected to him. So, you know, when you open up the file, it has to load up all those different pieces of clothing that are wrapped to the geometry and that can take some time um, so yeah I, I just want you to be aware of that um, if you see you know if you open up the flex rig 2.0 and if you don't see it loading up or anything uh, don't freak out because it can take some time just to load up so um, and yeah by default it's in version 2 uh, sorry viewport 2.0 and uh, it looks really good in viewport 2.0 but um, on my system, uh, it crashes a little bit, and uh, I think that's just because my graphic card isn't the best. But uh, you know, if if you're brave and if your computer has some really good specs, then go for it. You can animate flex using uh, Viewport 2.0. But just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna switch this to to the default quality uh, viewport. All right. Okay, so let's jump right into this. So he has several new features um, as compared to the uh, the version 1.0, which I will uh, explain shortly. Uh, I'd just like to um, explain to you guys some workflow methods that uh, will be really helpful when you're animating Flex 2.0. So the Flex Rig 2.0 was designed uh, was designed to have complete control over the character. But it was also designed to have, um, you know, full flexibility in terms of the animation and uh, customization of the character. So what I wanted uh, animators to be able to do was to uh, customize their character really quickly and efficiently without having to spend much time at all and to jump right into the animation. Um, so that's exactly what Flex 2.0 is uh, about. So I've added... Um, also some slight transparency to these controls. I just thought it looked a little cooler. If you don't like it, you can change that in the attribute editor. And uh, I, so I really suggest uh, referencing uh, Flex uh, 2.0. And uh, the reason why is that the scene uh, might be a little faster. It can be a little faster when you're working uh, in the viewport. And uh, also, there's a lot of unnecessary wrap nodes, as I mentioned before. Uh, that's in the outliner. Um, so you've got to go to geo all and geo underscore wrapped. So yeah, you can take a look at all these different wrap nodes. So I'd highly, highly recommend you referencing flex. So you have to, you know, customize your the the rig and the clothing and whatnot, and uh, save that file and reference that file with the custom clothing and textures and whatever. And also if you're experiencing, you know, some uh, strange, you know, artifacts around the, the body and the textures, um, like, you know, his, if his eyebrows look really pixelated and stuff like that, don't worry. 
because I have um, I'll show you what I did so I've just um, went to the hardware texturing um, menu over here and changed the texture resolution from default to highest okay that's all that I've done so it's just uh, you know the, the display in the viewport but uh, whenever you render it it still works out beautifully and it still comes out uh, crystal clear so this is just a viewport um, uh, precaution because if if I loaded the default textures, which is a 4K map, um, it, it starts lagging quite a bit. So I've done that with most of the uh, materials and shaders in this file. So don't worry if you start seeing some blurry stuff like this. It's actually very, very detailed. Okay, and you might have to reload um, some textures from the hypershade. But, uh, you know, if you're experiencing some, if, if a material is completely black or white and you're getting a message, an error message, um, yeah, you just have to go open up Hy Hypershade and reload some of the textures. And all of the textures are, are, um, are right here in the source images folder. So everything's here and I'd... Um, strongly suggest not renaming any of these things or not deleting any of these textures because every single one of these is used in the rig and uh, they're all um, named appropriately so that the rig uh, can function so don't change any of the names because um, you're gonna run into some issues all the names have been you know plugged into the rig and they are you know um, they are image sequences so like for example alpha underscore eyelash is one and alpha underscore eyelash is two so it's a image sequence that is being driven inside Maya so that whenever you change his eyelashes um, it changes these two textures so please please don't rename any of these and don't delete any of these textures just be careful with that okay you can edit the textures if you want like um, uh, I don't know if let's say this the polka dot dress texture if you want to change the color you're welcome to go into Photoshop but you have to overwrite the file so you have to save it as the exact same file name but you can change the color or whatever if you, if you don't like it so that's um, that's for the textures and uh, yeah like I said before if you really, if you really like working in viewport 2.0 um, then go for it personally the the rig crashes on my computer uh, I'm not sure why. Again, it's probably because of all those high resolution textures. But uh, yeah, you can still use uh, default quality or viewport, whatever you prefer. Alright, so without any more delay, I'm going to jump right into the new features of Flex 2.0. So you've got to go into, let's start with the Flexpression editor. So go to panels perspective and cam underscore Flexpression editor. So already you could see a few adjustments have been made. For example, I'm still in default quality rendering, and uh, I'm not getting that you know that uh, weird alpha channel like that plane. So you can see that the image is clearly cut out over here. Um, yeah, there's a bit of flickering going on in in the controls. That's again because of the transparency, and I just thought it looked a little cool. But if again, if you don't like it, you can. Just click on any control, go to the shading group attributes and just, you know, change the out transparency and make it completely black. If you want, like if these little things bug you, or if you have OCD. But yeah, okay, so I'm going to uh, get right into this. So right here, I'm not going to explain anything from version 1.0 because all of these things, um, like the basic things, general um, controls and stuff are covered in version 1.0. I'm just going to be covering the new features, okay? So if you still don't know what any of this stuff is and you're confused, please watch the version 1.0 tutorials, okay? Right down here you could see uh, the letter M. So just click on that and this is the micro expression control. And over here you have your micro facial controls and the mouth shaper. So by default they're both off. So let's switch on the micro facial controls and bam, look at all that detail. Really cool. So you can um, just click on the 
the outline of the rig, uh, sorry, of the flex expression editor, and you can scale it up and move it around too. So if you have a hard time selecting these little controls here, uh, you can scale up the flex expression editor. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of new uh, intuitive controls that are really, really, really nice. And I'm not going to go into every single control, but you know, the major ones are the lips. And yeah, like each, most of these controls have their own attributes. So always be um, attentive of that. So just make sure that uh, you look in the attribute editor, sorry, in the channel box, because they have um, several custom attributes. So, you know, you can smile now. And some of them have negative values too. Pucker is really nice. You can pucker his lips he, if he's whistling or something, you know. Bulge is to make his lips smaller, like really thin, really fat. Twist, seal, you know, to seal that gap in between his lips and puff. So, and you have lots of detail around the lips now, so you can shape his mouth to exactly how you want it. There's lots of control in, right, uh, with the with version 2.0. Again, there's Translate X, Y, and Translate Z is actually uh, plugged into this, so it's in, out. Because there's, you know, since this is uh, on a flat surface and it's constrained to the camera, you can't really move it in the Z axis. So you have to click on in and out and just drag it with your middle mouse button if you want to make any changes in Z depth. Um, yeah, so again, I'm not going to go into every single little control, but uh, they're all there and they all work. And yeah, this is, these are the micro facial expressions. So I'm going to turn off the micro facial controls, just press zero, and uh, let's turn on the mouth shaper and see how that is. So this is going to be really cool when you're animating a lip sync. So you've got to be careful, there's uh, two controls over here. One is a big yellow circle, and if you look closely, there's another green circle. So that's uh, the secondary mouth shaper control. So let's just focus on the yellow one for now. So I've labeled it really, you know, everything's color-coded so that you won't get confused. So the yellow uh, primary mouth shaper um, will be connected to the yellow uh, letters over here. So I've typed it in what kind of sound it makes, or like the shape of the sound. So this would be ooh, and ah, uh, and e, and o. Oh. So it's kind of like all the vowels. And if you click on the little green circle and drag it to any of the green um, um, letters, it makes that, uh, that specific uh, shape. So m, or th you know, the TH sound, or eh, or the F uh, sound. You can also combine these two, like if you want a little bit of, you know, something like that. So yeah, it's really cool when you have to animate lip sync. So have fun with that. It should be really interesting. And um, just be mindful not to have both of these things on at the same time because then yeah you're gonna <laughs> run into a big mess over here so I made everything much much cleaner and much more you know much more flexible so that is the flexpression editor